like you just press the start button and I'm glad you did. By the way, if you don't know what the start button is, if you press my video, that means you've pressed the start button because that's going to start the video. Anyways, today's video comes from a very, um, I should say, obsessive fangirl of me on YouTube. Now, I want to make it clear that I could be very mean in my response to her. I could be very sarcastic, or I could be very condescending, or I could be very cruel and personally attack her, cuss at her, call her names. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to kindly and respectfully respond to her video, since it seems to have uh, created quite a stir on my Facebook fan page. Hey YouTube, what's up? Um, so today I wanted to make this video and address some of the various issues I've been running into um, concerning Dan or Mr. Repsion. And I really liked what he had to say in general. I don't agree with everything he has to say, just like I don't agree with everything TJ has to say. Um, but I like him, and I generally do like him. So I decided to send him an email, um, and I was like, I was sort of like, I'm so embarrassed about it now, um, I was sort of like wanting, I was just basically like, I'm going to talk to you, you know, on like Skype or something sometime. Like I did sort of, I guess, initiate a relationship type thing that I was, that's what I was interested in. <laughs> um, or I did insinuate, I guess, that I was interested in a relationship. And that was probably the mistake now that I look back on it. I'm just a really, this is just who I am though, you know. I'm a really forward person, really direct. That's who I am. I'm not a subtle person. I don't play games. I don't, and the reason I don't is because I don't really like when other people play games with me. And he didn't respond. And I was like, ugh. And so then I sent him like a form spring question. And same thing. And, um, did you, yeah, I tweeted him. Yeah, I tweeted him. And I didn't get a response from any of the things. Okay, first things first, you didn't insinuate. You actively pursued a online relationship with me. You added me on Skype. I sent you a message asking, do I know you from YouTube? Am I subscribed to you on YouTube? Whatever. I didn't know who you are, so when you added me, I accepted you. I sent you a message and asked who you were. That's what I normally do if I add people I don't know on Skype, which I'm starting to lean towards isn't a good idea anymore, especially after this incident. Within minutes of the conversation, you start asking me if you could be essentially my girlfriend. In fact, before you added me on Skype, you had asked me previously on Formspring, which is still, those que the questions she asked me is still on my Formspring right now. If you would like to go view those, you can. This girl asks me, um, if I would be willing to have an online relationship with her, and I said, no. And I said, no. And I said, no. She asked me numerous times on my form spring, and then she wanted to know why I wouldn't have an online relationship with her. Then she proceeded to say, oh, I could be a, the best girlfriend, etc., etc. Go to my form spring if you don't believe me on this. So me being myself, I asked her to s s please stop asking me for an online relationship, because that's just not me. I don't do online relationships, I can't do online relationships, and I'm not even remotely interested in pursuing or actively having an online relationship. I just can't do online boyfriend-girlfriend relationships. It's not me. This then led to her adding me on Skype, which, down below in the description, if you press the expand button, you can see the entire chat log which we had on Skype. I posted it down there for a reason, so you can see what she said, and what I said. So again, you didn't insinuate a relationship, you actively pursued a relationship with me after I said, please stop. So number one, you didn't respect what I had to say, you just didn't leave it, you continued to pursue it. You know, and he didn't, uh, I got no response. I decided to add his Skype. I added his Skype. I was like, let's just see what happens. I added it one day, I was like, okay. So I went back on Skype the next day, I logged on Skype. And he had actually I am to me on Skype and was like, Do I know you? And I was like, No, not really, but you know, I just wanted to get to know you and talk to you more and all of this stuff. And I told him a little bit about myself and then he was like, I don't really talk to people um that I don't know on Skype and I was like, Really? That's funny because um you even said in one of your videos that you got to know TJ through Skype. He uh DM'd you on uh, Twitter and 
asked you for your Skype username and you gave it to him and then you guys Skyped and that's how you got to know him and I was like so that's kind of interesting that you know you would say that but um, then you're saying another thing to me because obviously if you just know TJ through Twitter you don't really know him know him you know and uh, so he was like but I did know him before like whatever just like lying and I was like okay whatever you're actually quite mistaken. I've been watching TJ the Amazing Atheist since he first started YouTube. That's how long I've been watching him. And as a very, very long time viewer, I can say that through watching his videos, I have got to know him to an extent. I still remember when he subscribed to me on YouTube. I still remember when I first went into his first blog TV room and he mentioned my name to his hundred and something chatters in blog TV. My name. In fact, I had talked with TJ not just before Twitter, but on Form Spring, and I was even an admin on his Form website, which I still am to this very day, before he added me on Skype. And I don't know why you're comparing your friendship and adding me on Skype with that of TJ. Um, just talking a little bit more about myself and, you know, just telling him you should give me a chance and, like, all of that. And he, um, he just, like, blocked me, logged off, and it was, it was really rude. I was pissed because, in my opinion, you don't just leave somebody in the dust. You know, tell me, all right, um, I'm leaving, I'm going, whatever. Um, I don't know, in my opinion, you don't just, like, leave. You're right, it would have been rude if I had done that, but I didn't. Again, the chat conversation we had in Skype is down below in the description, and you can see exactly what I said. I even told you previously that I was going to delete you off of Skype. You gave me a sad face, and then when I deleted you off of Skype, you therefore say that I was rude and I didn't say a proper goodbye when I properly alerted you that I was going to delete you off of Skype. I didn't just add you and delete you, I actually did in fact converse with you. Briefly, but I did converse with you. What I did and said was not rude at all. Now if I had said something like, F you, you're stupid, and then block you or delete you, that'd be a lot different, but that's not what happened. It upsets me when people do that kind of stuff. And so I was pretty upset. I was pretty upset. And then I log on to Facebook. And I see that he posted something on Facebook about me. He said, added a fangirl to Skype by accident. Big mistake, in all caps. And I was like, excuse me? You don't fucking call me a fangirl. Don't put some stupid label on me. You don't even know me. You don't even know anything about me. You don't know what I can do. You don't know... You don't know shit, honey. You you didn't even really even listen to what I was saying. And you, to put some label on me, that's not cool at all. That is the opposite of cool. It just blows my mind that people do this kind of shit and will be really hypocritical because, you know, he talks all the time about not judging people. And yet, he's judging me. He's putting a label. I'm a fangirl just because I want to get to know him. I read everything you wrote to me on Skype. The only thing was, I was actually playing Minecraft on my other monitor while you were typing to me. But other than that, I did read what you said. And almost instantaneously, when you started talking, the word fangirl popped up in my head based upon the things you were saying, how you were writing it, saying things like, I love you. And then when it occurred to me that you were the same girl who asked me for an online relationship that you wanted to be my girlfriend over Formspring, that's when I said, you know, I'm not really interested in having a friendship or relationship with someone who's obsessing over me, and then when I ask them to please stop, they don't. Even on the internet, there is such a thing called boundaries, and you broke those boundaries with me by continuing to pursue me after I already said no. But I decided that I was going to hold my head up high, and I said on his Facebook, I posted a, as a comment on his on the post that the fan girl was me. Um, and the reason I did not was to own it and be like, you know what, you don't get to get away with trying to like publicly defame me, even though you know there he didn't attach my name or anything. But defame you? I'm afraid you're highly mistaken. Uh, the word defame implies that it is a false. Uh, claim against you. For example, if I worked at a job 
and I was browsing the internet, and one of my co-workers said to me, well, Daniel Solzbach is distributing child pornography on his work computer, and I hadn't done that, that would be defamation of character. That would be defaming someone. Defaming is making a claim about someone which is not true and which is specifically false. This is under legal terms. I've studied law. I know what defaming is, and I did not defame you. All I said is I added a fangirl on Skype, and it was a big mistake, which it was. And you're actually not the first person I've added on my Skype who was a fangirl. You're not the first person, and I normally end up deleting them. I honestly can't stand to be instant messaged every time I log on from people asking me, Hi, I love you, or I, these saying crazy things like that all the time. I get hundreds of emails on my MrRepsion at gmail.com, which is set up to my Gmail account for YouTube. I get hundreds of emails from people every day. Some of them are like six or five pages in length telling me their entire story of when they were abused, all these crazy things, and I just can't respond to all of them. I have, as of right now, I opened my Mr. Repsy on Gmail uh, two months ago, and I have over 400 emails from people. Individual messages written by individual people asking me for advice, help on issues, and I just can't respond to it. Likewise with my Facebook, my personal Facebook that I have, which I don't add friends on my personal Facebook unless we have friends in common or I know you somewhat. I get tons and tons of friend requests on my personal Facebook. I get tons and tons of questions asked on Form Spring. I just can't keep up with all of it. And the fact that you expect me, or I should say demand me to befriend you over Skype when I have no idea who you are, you try to pursue a relationship with me after I say no, and then make a video like this and post it to one of my videos, that shows that you have a problem. That shows that you are more than just obsessive about me. You are, in fact, a fangirl. That's not a label. That's a correct judgment that I've made based upon your participation on pursuing me. But just me knowing it was about me was enough. And so I decided, like, I'm going to own my shit. I'm going to say, you know what? It was me. And I'm proud of it. I'm not embarrassed about it. Fine. You know, do whatever the fuck you want. And so that was that. And, uh, and I kept tweeting him. I decided to tweet him. And I'm not going to address all the tweets, by the way. Um, and I said, ha, but you didn't even say like, okay, nice talking, bye. You just left and you talked about me and called me a fangirl. And I said, no hard feelings. Um, I decided to just move on. Today, uh, he posted on Facebook that he is in Blog TV, so I decided to go in. So I go into the Blog TV room and, I, and as soon as I get in there, as soon as I'm in, I find out that he was talking about my poem because people were commenting about the poem. And I was like, whoa, where did that come from? Like, I was like really taken aback by it. I was not expecting that. Um, but I owned it. I decided not to let it bother me. And I was just like, hi, I am the person who wrote the poem. Apparently they were really talking about me. Um, and so then he went on and was like, and now I will publicly defame you because you're right here with me. And I'm like, okay. I'm sorry, but I did not say that I'm going to publicly defame you. You really need to start being more honest with yourself and accusations that you make against me. If you're going to make an accusation against me, at least have it be accurate with something I said. I would never say to someone ever that I'm going to publicly defame you. That is wrong, and you can, in fact, be prosecuted for defamation of character, for making up false information about people. And so, he's like, you are a fangirl, like, by the way, and I'm like, that's, and I thought it was, I was like, you know what, that's kind of insulting, because you don't even know me, you don't know how smart I am, you don't know anything about me, and, you know, I am a really smart girl. I said, like, it ignores my intellectual integrity, because it kind of does. You know, fangirls, it's like, woohoo, Jonas Brothers, you know, that's what you think of when you think of a fangirl, not somebody like me. And I'm like, you know, you don't know anything, you don't know what I can do, honey. And, um, he was just like, usually when you say you are smart, that means you're not very smart. So I was just like, okay, whatever, dude. And 
And then he was like, to his ops, he was like, somebody kicks her out of the room, I won't stop you. And then they kicked me. Um, wow. So, okay, let me get this straight. You've said in other videos before that you are not for censorship. You don't delete comments on YouTube. People should be able to say whatever they want, whatever. You've criticized Onision for um, censoring people. But yet, you've censored me today on Blog TV. You know what? You may not have been the person that kicked me out of the room, but you're the one that suggested it and encouraged it. My oh my, do you not know the definition of censorship? The argument that you are in fact presenting here is what is known as formally of what con is considered a thought crime. Let's say I consider stealing a piece of bread at the store. I'm thinking about stealing it, but I don't take the actual act of stealing it. I'm therefore a criminal because, you know, I thought the crime, I thought about stealing, Therefore, I should be punished rightly so because I thought about stealing a piece of bread. I didn't do it, but I thought about it. You're, that's the same logic you're using here. Because I suggested someone to kick you, because I didn't even kick you, my admin did, I'm therefore censoring you. No, that's not censorship. The only time I will censor something is when it violates my privacy, my address in my house address of my ex-girlfriend, which I've actually dealt with. I had someone find the address of my ex-girlfriend and post it on my blog, my YouTube before. I had to, I deleted that because it's that's a violation of privacy. But comments calling me names, asking me anything, or even just degrading me, defaming me, I'm not going to delete those comments. I don't believe in censorship. If I can't answer a question, I'm not going to delete it like so many Christians do here on YouTube. So please, if you're going to claim that I am censoring you, understand what the word censorship actually is. And by the way, in case you didn't know, when you sign up to the website Blog TV, you sign what is known as a contract agreement or license agreement for that website. Meaning that if you go into someone's show, specifically mine, I have rules and you have to abide by those rules. If you violate those rules, I can ban you at will. My admins can kick you. That's not censorship. So, you know what? Fuck you. And, you know, you don't just censor people. Practice what you preach. If you really mean it, don't be a fucking hypocrite. You know? Just let me say what I have to say. Okay? Respect it. And then just move on. If you don't like it, then don't fucking listen. Don't try to censor me. Don't try to hold me down and not give me a voice. Because I will talk. And I will do everything in my power to get my message out there. And, you know, that's not going to stop me. And um, the fact that you were talking about me on blog TV before I was even in the room. Because like I said, I got in the room. You know, I look all this conversation um, about me and my poem. Wow. So, you share something that I shared with you privately. That was not for other people. I really am... You know, I don't really care if other people see it, but I am hurt that you would do that without asking me. And you would just show everybody my poem, then mock me, and, you know, let's laugh about her, ha ha, and you claim to be anti-bullying? That is an act of bullying, okay? That is bullying me. Here's the thing. Your Twitter message you sent me with your poem was public. It was not private. You tweeted me publicly. It wasn't private. Therefore, I'm under no obligation to ask your permission to show a poem that you wrote. If you had sent me an email privately on my Mr. Epsiana Gmail, like a lot of people do, Mr. Epsiana Gmail .com, I don't share private information that people send me. Yours was not private. It happened to be public. You set you asked it on my form spring, which again was public. You asked it on my Twitter which again was public. So you posted your poem on several of my networking sites publicly for other people to see. And then when I shared it with somebody or talked about it, you're all upset that I would show somebody a poem which was already public to begin with. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And addressing the bullying issue, you don't know what bullying is. I can tell you that. Bullying is physical or verbal abuse. Bullying is real bullying. It takes place when you know the person, takes place at a school environment, takes place in a place where you can't escape being bullied, and cyberbullying, the word cyberbullying, 
only exists in the context of when real-life bullying exists at school and then transfers onto the internet. Meaning that cyberbullying does not exist if I simply call you a name or you call me a name on YouTube or comments or Facebook and if I don't know you and you don't know me that does not qualify and does not meet the requirements for cyberbullying. Again, cyberbullying only exists in the context where it starts at school, real life, and then transfers onto the internet from the same people in real life onto the internet. Please don't play the whole bully card because you're not being bullied. In fact, I am being very kind and to an extent compassionate in this video. There are certain things you need to learn about the internet and there are certain things you need to learn about boundaries. When you break boundaries, people are not going to want to be around you. They're not going to want to be to talk to you. Just like in my case over Skype, Twitter, Formspring, and Facebook. I don't think you're a respectable person. I don't think you're a nice person. I don't think you're a person with any integrity. You have lost my subscription. You've lost my respect and you can go and fuck yourself well you are entitled to your opinion you can believe whatever you want to believe about me that's fine if you don't respect me that's fine I don't care if you don't think I have any integrity that's fine I don't care you make the point about unsubscribing to me I don't care crazy and hypocritical thing here is is that you're the person who is actually attacking me you're the person who's called me already derogatory names over Twitter, you've called me, you've sweared at me, you've technically online harassed me, because harassment means when you tell somebody to stop and they continue to come after you and pursue something when you've already told them you don't want contact. Now obviously I don't take the whole harassment thing seriously, although that isn't what in fact you have done, but all I can really say to you is that you are a prime example of what I would call an extremist fangirl. Not just a fangirl who enjoys my videos and writes comments on videos. You take the extra effort to pursue someone when they've already said no and you disrespect their wishes when they've already said no. You make a video response to my video, I accept it. You claim things about me which are not true that I am trying to defame you. And the only person I would say who does not have any honesty or integrity is you. If you truly wanted to get to know me on a more personal level, you should have respected what I originally said about pursuing an online relationship with me. But because you didn't, it's ended up like it has. I don't have anything against you. I'm not going to call you names, although I certainly could. I haven't personally attacked you, but I have, in fact, laughed at how ridiculous you are. All I can say is that you are, in fact, a fangirl. I'm Mr. Repsion, also known as Daniel Sulzbach. A uh, link to her video, the full video, is down below in the description along with the entire Skype conversation if you would like to see what was actually written. And with that said, peace the rep out.